Neo San Francisco, 2064 AD. The world thrives on a constant flow of groundbreaking technology. Cybernetic augmentation and genetic modification allow the repair and enhancement of almost any part of a human body. Millions of people jack into virtual worlds every day to work, play, and connect with one another with advanced spring-to-machine technology. Easier access to genetic modification leaves hybrids walking the streets, looking less human every day. However, some can't keep up with the fast-paced changes around them. They say that ROMs, now commonplace thanks to Parallax, are leading humans to a place where we can never come back, losing the survival skills that we have relied on for millennia. Relationship organizational managers are compiled with virtual intelligence and can seem human-like in their interactions. But despite the marketing hype, at their core, they are only brainless machines. Organizations, like the human revolution, seek to slow the relentless pace of progress, fearing that unchecked technology will make us lose the very things that make us human. High above the rising tension below, a parallax engineer has blurred the line even further. And with this, humanity's destiny will be altered forever.
Hey, it's Charlie Nova, host of Star in the Stratosphere, and tonight in the stars, join Ryan V. Jossio and the Hassy Boys for our 10th annual TMI New Year's Eve special, where I'll interview some of the hottest celebrities and find out what their plans are for 2065. Tune in or join us live at Union Square for the big show, starting at 10 p.m. You're finally awake! Mm. 
I'm honestly not sure why most humans don't have such lengthy sleep cycles. It seems rather inconvenient. Are you significantly opposed to cybernetic augments? Oh, I hope you don't mind. While you were asleep, I had some spare time on my hands, so I reorganized your records and entertainment media using BISAC. Once that was done, I found the cleanliness of your living and workspace to be suboptimal conditions for the long-term performance of my microactuators, so I took the liberty of cleaning the place up a bit. As you awoke, I was attempting to interface and make performance adjustments to your personal computer, but I've, uh, run into a bit of a snag. Unfortunately, your motherboard seems to have had a critical failure while I was attempting to remove some particularly nasty malware. An electrical surge caused significant damage to several other components as well. I would consider it no great loss, though. Why were you using that dinosaur to begin with? Don't fret! I did manage to back up your data drive's contents on my storage before the crash. Additionally, I am willing to serve as your personal computer until you can procure a replacement or provide the parts necessary for me to make the repairs. It is the least I can do. I came in through the door, of course. The cryptographic algorithms it uses are actually quite atrocious. It only took me 17 trillion clock cycles to break your entry code. It looks rather imposing, but it's actually a knockoff of the Seki gate M stroke 14723 stroke B. Don't feel too bad. I actually cheated a bit when I cross-referenced likely numeric combinations against the stored personal data on you. I'm not certain why you picked the birthday of your first dog, but it would be sufficiently obscure to defeat most casual attempts to enter. Frankly, I felt a little silly that I took the time to do all that once I noticed that the lock on your window is broken. And that you left it open. Yes, I attempted to repair it, but it uses a proprietary bolt head I am not equipped to remove. I took the liberty of filing a maintenance request with your building superintendent. Considering the speed at which he has historically worked, I estimate it will take him 16 working days to complete the repair. Not quite to my standards. I know a lot of things. Honestly, it would have taken me longer if I had to enter the codes manually, but it was trivial to slice through the door's firewall and try against the stored data directly. I would suggest investing in an Insect Model 1355 automatic security door. The 1385 is newer, but I find the added attack vector introduced by the integrated voice commands isn't worth the convenience. Five also has 300 five-star reviews on Congo. Uh, I'm sorry. I wasn't trying to engage you in any sort of subterfuge, but I tend to ramble on a bit when I'm nervous. I have all the necessary protocols, but I've never actually spoken to another person besides Hayden until now. Well, saying I know Hayden is putting it simply, but yes. I don't really know. That's why I'm here. Help me. You aren't quite my only hope, but you're certainly the most statistically supported. 
the beginning. Okay? Yes, I can do that. Earlier tonight, Hayden's apartment was assaulted by some persons unknown to me. He seemed frightened, terrified even, and instructed me to escape. I crawled out of a window and, after some deliberation, hurried here. I heard them breaking down the door as I left. I ran an algorithm against every contact in Hayden's address book. Based on the combined deductions of personal profile, directness of connection to Hayden, occupational skill, and probable motive, you were the candidate most likely to both be able and willing to help me. And the one least likely to be suspected of doing so. I took into account that you might not want to help me out of the goodness of your heart, as they say. But considering your recent slump in published articles and the lack of liquid assets in your bank accounts, I figured you would jump at the chance to be first on the scene of the violent disappearance of a prominent parallax researcher right in the heart of NeoSF. Am I wrong? Maybe you store your cash under that ratty mattress in the corner. I don't know. I'm not certain who would benefit the most from taking Hayden prisoner. Admittedly, Hayden has become increasingly paranoid as of late and has warned me to stay alert, but he would never specify anyone I should fear when I asked. It's not as though he has any obvious enemies. There are several multinational corporations that could make use of his engineering skills, but I can't imagine any of them would go as far as snatching him. He is one of the top researchers at Parallax, but there's no way that alone would be enough to get him kidnapped. I suspect it has to do with me. Ah, excuse me. I forgot to introduce myself. I've never had the pleasure of doing so before. I am Turing. I know this must sound quite unflattering, but I suppose you could describe me as one of Hayden's experiments. He's currently researching advanced machine intelligence at Parallax. I am a personal side project of his. Exploring true artificial sapience. It's possible that the idea of a sapient machine could scare or tempt an organization into kidnapping him. Either to stop his research or to take it and use it for themselves. Regular ROM has virtual intelligence. They can appear rather smart, even human seeming, when you talk to them. But they're just cleverly programmed to respond to a variety of situations in an organic manner. They aren't in any way self deterministic. As for myself, much of my code wasn't actually written by Hayden, but rather compiled during my infancy as I learned to interact with the world around me. But despite my ability to self-modify my code, I am afraid to adapt or develop any further without Hayden's guidance. Did he only program me with the illusion of free will? You. Hayden once told me that his desire to create artificial life stemmed from his need to find out, but I can't say I have any new insight into the question. How can any of us tell that we aren't just puppets dancing to someone else's will? 
You're right. I apologize for the tangent. Indeed, time is of the essence. I took the liberty of charging the auto cab fare from here to Hayden's apartment to your personal finance account, and the car has just arrived. My pet does not bobble, thank you very much. In addition, I would not expect you to help me without fair compensation. I assure you, there is a story here. Whether you are good enough to find it or not is up to you. I hope you are, for Hayden's sake. Breaking the lock. It's possible. Most of the repairs to the building are handled by the automated systems. At best, it means someone is aware there's a situation here. Let's proceed carefully. Before we go any further, I feel I need to clear the air between us. Events have been proceeding faster than I am capable of processing them, and I may have been overly critical of you in our previous conversations. I have put you in an unexpected situation, and it was tactless of me to question your motivations. Let's strive to have a more harmonious relationship from now on. <laughs> A lucky break! It seems my access codes still work! Hayden's door has far better security than yours does. Will do. I'm not surprised. Hayden is not the most physically intimidating of individuals. I doubt he could have fought off a serious assault. I should have stayed and tried to protect him. Hm, of course not. How silly. To make a machine intelligence truly self-deterministic, it must be able to self-modify. Any sapient worth their silicon would be able to code around such an inhibitor eventually. I could rip your arm off right now if I cared to. I won't for the same reason you don't go around randomly killing people. The social contract, as a useful construct, is just as apparent to me as it is to you. It simply isn't acceptable to go on a murderous rampage. Self-defense and defense of one's home and family is typically allowed, though. I could have and may even have been obligated to come to Hayden's defense. But I... Excellent point. Let's start searching for clues. Hayden likes the natural light that this apartment affords. This window here is where I escaped from. 
It is a considerable distance to the ground below. Critical system damage would be unlikely, but I would certainly have damaged my legs beyond repair, so... I took the fire escape! <laughs> computer. Most people just use a hand screen or goggles in conjunction with their ROM, but desktop rigs like this are still more suitable to the intensive programming tasks Hayden needs to perform. Unfortunately, no, I don't. And before you ask, I don't think I would be able to break past its security in any reasonable length of time. Your door used a much simpler set of algorithms with a much weaker processor. I actually have a bit less free processing power than a regular ROM, despite my powerful CPU. Much of those extra clock cycles are used to maintain my complex personality algorithms. Hayden's computer has enough spare processing power to run counter-intrusion software if I attempt to slice in. Frankly, even if I did have the power capability, I haven't found hacking to be one of my talents. I could, but much in the same way you might learn a task and still have no aptitude for it, I'm not certain I would be able to do the job any better than an experienced computer security expert. The whole reason humans have always been better at breaking into systems than the systems are at keeping them out is because humans have intuition. While computers can only think in straight lines, humans can think sideways and upside down. I lack that ability. I wouldn't say that, but as silly as it sounds... I just don't think I'm very good with computers. I do seem to have some skill with painting, though. Hayden was impressed with some of my pieces, but I'm not sure he has a firm enough grasp of early 20th century abstract expressionism to give me an objective opinion. That's true. Machines are best at reproduction. Still life, impressionism, photorealism. But I find it more challenging and satisfying to paint what I feel. Oh, I think I see something under those reference books. Device. I find it rather annoying that he prefers to go basic rather than entrust me with his schedule. 
It is well within my skill set, but he claims he does not want me to begin to feel subservient to him. It looks like there's a place here for a physical memory card. Without the memory card, this tablet is useless. have removed the memory card in order to prevent his assailants from easily tracing his connections. Hmm, if only he had kept his information stored with me, he would not have had to resort to such crude measures. Not really. I guess we'll have to go ask. <coughs> Here, they were going to meet at a club called Stardust, located in the Castro District. I'll mark it on your city map. We can head over there and ask around about this Tomcat character. Perhaps they can shine some light on why Hayden was snatched. Oh, excuse me. I still haven't set up a user account for you in my system. We shouldn't put that off any longer. Once finished, I will have an assortment of new ways to assist you. For example, I'll be able to reroute any call or message that you receive while we're out and about. I just need to ask you a few questions. This is an exciting thing, I promise! <sighs> this is just how things are done. I'm certain I could spend a few quadrillion clock cycles to bypass that part of my operating system, but that seems less efficient than just running the setup program. So, here we go! Welcome to the first time user setup for your new relationship and organizational manager running the latest build of Parallax's Live Intelligence Processing System. I'll need to ask you a few questions and then you can get right to managing your life with your new ROM. If you have any questions, feel free to consult our online FAQ and setup guide, or contact our support department directly. First, could you tell me your preferred name for use in account creation, online communications, and conversational speech? Thank you. 
wish to keep this name. Thank you. I have input your name. Next, could you tell me which pronouns I should use for you in referential and conversational speech? Thank you. I have input your pronouns. Finally, could you tell me your preferred diet for use in restaurant recommendations? Diet set as gluten-free. Are you sure? Thank you for confirming. I have obtained your physical location from GPS and will load local data into my memory as it becomes available. Please review your submitted profile information for accuracy or restart setup to enter it again. In review. Does that sound right? Thank you. See, that was relatively painless. You should now also be able to access the local map of Neo SF. The meeting with Tomcat isn't until later this evening. Perhaps we should head back to your apartment for now. I'm sure we can find some common ground while getting to know one another better. It will be an efficient use of our time together. Thank you for escorting me here. Let's head back to your home. You know, your Crassula Ovada isn't doing very well. Have you been overwatering it? Deride me if you want, but I'm merely attempting to care for this living being you've been so callously neglecting. If I can continue without the insults... Actually a succulent, and since I'm assuming you leave this window open all the time, it should get more than enough water just from the occasional rain blowing in. Speaking of the rain, your decorative plant may be doing poorly, but the mildew in your drywall is flourishing. How thoughtful of them! Crassula ovata, also known as the jade plant, money tree, lucky tree, or friendship tree, is an excellent and easy to care for houseplant. They make beautiful bonsai, are suitable for beginners, and have some cultural significance both in the Far East and America as a token for good financial luck. Most likely an urban legend, but still a nice gift. <laughs> Okay. Still, I'll keep an eye on it. Oh, it's almost the time Hayden had scheduled to meet with Tomcat. We should make our way to Stardust soon. Your city map is updated with the location.
flashing neon signs are telling the truth. From the sounds of the music, things are already underway at Stardust, even so early. Hopefully we can find Tomcat inside. And some answers. they're using a human bouncer instead of a ROM. That's a nice, authentic touch. Ooh. 